The deep sand track at Southwick is recognized as the toughest test of man and machine in American motocross. And it is no surprise that the tough man, Eli Tomac, was the best of the bunch in our first moto earlier today, romping from eighth to first to take the win. It's time to line up and do it again. 40 riders, 30 minutes and two laps. Gonna drop the gate on Moto2. It's round six of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, the MB Tractor and Equipment Southwick National. Jason Wygant joined by the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael, to call the second 450 moto of the day. Eli Tomac came, he saw, he conquered in moto number yeah, one. Yeah, he's moving, picking up from where he left off in Redwood, Jason, and uh, this guy is just unstoppable right now. But you got to give it up to Chase Sexton, minimizing the damage, coming back to second place. I like what he's doing. Trying to keep it as close as he can. We'll show you the highlights of that first moto. It's a little, little over an hour ago. Darius Sexton on the start. It's going to be his teammate, Ken Roxon, though, who gets the best jump and captures the motosport.com hole shot, just edging ahead of Ryan Dungey and Sexton. So Roxon leads early as a pile up. Jason Anderson gets caught in it two weeks in a row. That has happened to Anderson. He's at the bottom with his bike buried under the sand. He come back to eighth. Christian Craig would get around Ryan Dungey for second and then go after Roxon for the lead. He would uh, look at that quick pass to get the lead. Pulled out just a few seconds on Ken Roxon and the, and the boys behind him. But that would save him to eventually ride into a, a third place. Yeah, Ryan Dungey comes into that corner just a little too hard, buries the front end, Berm gives away, and down he goes. Then Eli Tomek, see him get by Dungey, and he was on a mission. Critical move to get around Chase Sexton, takes over third. Well, you talked to Chase Sexton after the podium, and he says he needed to be a little more aggressive early, but I don't know if he had enough to beat this guy number three, going right by Ken Roxon. Yep, so that puts him into second. Remember, his teammate Craig is still leading, and he just powers out of this corner. Look at that. So fast, over jumping the jumps, just fully sending it. Sexton has to respond and follow Tomac through. He uses the outside to inside line to get second from Craig. As you said, RC, minimizing the damage. You can't beat Tomac. You got to finish as close to him as possible. And Tomac would rally, pull out almost 10 seconds at one point, got toward the end. Final margin of victory, 7.6 seconds over Sexton. Craig holds on for a hard-earned third great ride. And Dungey, despite the crash, fourth. Roxon would have his troubles late. Max Anstey would squeeze by for a top five. Anderson, after that crash, eighth. What a comeback for him. Savachi and Bloss rounding out the top 10. Riders have their last chance to survey this Southwick track before the second and final moto of their day. We'll be back with moto number two after this. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda. Celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Well, all great stories have to start somewhere. And for motocross riders, the first chapter begins by earning their invite via qualifying for the Red Lens National Amateur Championship. The first time I went to Loretta Lens, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. We pulled in and we were like, we are out of our leagues in this thing, but Loretta's was just that, that next level of seriousness, you know? It was an eye-opener, that's for sure. Loretta's is like the one race that you strive to get to all year when you're an amateur. To actually get through qualifiers, get through regionals, and um, do all that you need to do to get to that place, uh, it's it's pretty surreal when you do because that's that's something that that people work their whole lives for and you know to get into that prestigious race is is a pretty awesome feeling my first time at Loretta Lens would have been 2006 I think um, 50 junior class I wasn't very good I was um, kind of a slow learner so going there my first time 
it was uh, a lot to take in. I was just there to have fun, honestly. I was not really there to win, um, just more there to, for the experience. I think my family was as well, so um, it was cool. When you get into the ranch there, it's it just it feels like you're in different air. It's that type of place when you go there. So it's <clears throat> that's the first thing I, I remember is it's 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 the big show and it's intimidating. Even as a little kid, you knew that was the pinnacle of amateur racing. I mean, that was the the biggest race, and to win that, all the factories are there, all the they're watching you, and so um, the first year wasn't great, but. I think it was good to experience it, get the nerves out, and from then on, just try to keep building every single year and getting and getting better. And um, I was actually fortunate enough to win it uh, my last year as an amateur to be able to win Loretta's. It was it was a pretty cool moment. That race can change lives. You can see the coverage on RacerTV.com. First week of August, racing starts on Tuesday, August 1st, and runs through Saturday the 6th. That's always always the place that the top stars of the future have to run through. And when they run to the pro level, they'll eventually have to tame this track here at Southwick. We'll let the riders talk about it with our MX versus ATV Legends track map. Most challenging part at Southwick would obviously be the deep sand. It's the, the one race a year where you're dealing with those conditions. Um, we deal with either hot weather or it rains there. So very challenging mentally and physically. I'd say the biggest thing is physically um, just because of how much it wears your body down. So Southwick is one of those races you, you circle on the list and you make sure you're ready for it. The most challenging part of Southwick is just making it through the moto period and it, uh, it wears on you, it wears on your body. So you gotta, be, you gotta be fit and you gotta be ready for that one. Okay, so that's our track. Let's send it down to Will Christian. Thank you, Jason. And our points leader, Honda HRC's Chase Sexton, still has some work cut out for him here today. Second in that first moto with a win here in moto two. He could take the overall here today, but we just heard from the riders that is not going to be easy to do here at Southwick. I checked in with Shane Drew, who is the crew chief at, uh, for the 450s over at Honda, asked him what does he think Chase needs to do. And he told told him more intensity in those first few laps. He said, you can't eat the roost that you're eating. You've got to get out there early. Chase did say, well, what happens if I make a mistake? And Shane said, you got to get that balance right. <laughs> Easier said than there done. There you go. Physical preservation, bike preservation. We talked about it the first motos. Same as the second motos. You got to get that bike to the finish and get yourself to that finish. Find that limit. Don't go over it. That's the KTM keys to the moto. Chase Sexton learning on the fly how to run for a 450 motocross title under pressure from Eli Tomac. Revs are up. Gates down in moto two. It's Roxon again leading them into the first turn. Craig again on the inside, very similar to moto one. So Roxon has two motosport.com hole shots today. And Plessinger third, that's about the best start we've seen from him this year, Alex Martin. A good start on the Muckoff Club MX Yamaha in fourth. Where's Sexton? Where's Tomac? Anderson a much better run. He got to the first uh, turn. Tomac's late. right up the inside. Okay. He's going to make the move on Ryan Dungey. Yeah, but great to your point. Great to see Plessinger up there. I want to see what he can do with the good start. He's had speed all season long, just been in some unfortunate circumstances, partially to his own doing. However, I think he has some decent speed to run up front here. Tomac looking to get around the veteran Martin, who has announced this will be his last professional season. Going to his home track next week at Millville, Minnesota. Martin trying to hold Tomac at bay, and he does. Roxon already pulling away from Craig. Oh, Roxon gets to the outside of that berm. Nice save, ever so gracefully. Doesn't even look like he has an almost moment. For a mere mortal, it would have been You'd have probably been in the cheap seats eating hot dogs by now. <laughs> Lights out. Okay, so Plessinger attacking Craig. Tomac all over Amart. Oh, Tomac had a wheel yeah, there on him. he was trying to get. Oh, he's trying. There he goes. He got it. So that'll move Tomac into the number four position just ahead of Martin and then Dungey and then Sexton. So Sexton's going to have to do some work here. Oh, Tomac leaping to the top of that hill. It's It's crazy here these guys I mean the front runners Oh, Sexton buries the bike in the berm we talked about it getting up high in those berms like that you get into where it's really loose and it robs the power and the momentum 
in the corners. Oh, look at Dunsey trying to get by Alex Martin. Beta Motorcycles drone cam here. We got battles all over this track at Southwick. Well, they fight for that track position, Jason. It's so important because if you if you lose that track position early, it's so hard to make back up on the front runner, especially if you're Chase Sexton. You want to get up there as quick as possible. Look at Anderson championship sending points. it all the way down to the inside. Can he make this work? He did. He set that up two, three corners ago. Anderson around Sexton. Awesome pass by Jason Anderson. Love the aggression early. Oh, he's got to be frustrated with the way these starts and these motos have gone the last couple of weeks. So Anderson looking to make something happen here as we go back to Tomac. Closing in on Plessinger for third. And Plessinger is right there on Craig. A lot of racing left. Now remember, this track's a lot rougher now than it was when they took their first moto over an hour ago. Conditions have certainly changed. Sometimes later on here at Southwick, the berms can get a little more identified they can be a little bit better, but the roughness still gets ba bad. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Plessinger fighting so hard to make the move, and he does. Best ride we've seen so far this year from the seven. Well, he's had speed. He's had speed all year long in the races, on majority of the motos. He's just been so far behind the, so far in the pack. Let's send it down to Will with Moore and Aaron. Something that might have helped him out there, guys, talking to him earlier on this morning, he said they did make a shock change, which in his words gave him a lot more comfort. Obviously, we know he's still nursing that ankle injury there a little bit, but uh, right now it seems to have made a bit of difference, guys. Oh, uh, yeah, this is the first time we've seen him run this high up in the order. Second right now, Plessinger, as the Yamaha boys fight it out for third. Craig versus Tomac. Track absolutely brutal, brutal like, oh, they almost came together. Tomac had that speed up the hill the previous lap. There just wasn't enough room to yeah, pull it like to see went for it. I'd like to see if we can get a replay from that, but that's a really tricky situation, and it takes a lot of strength when you're G'd out because you're wanting to pull the front end up and keep that front end light, but the G-forces are pulling the front end down. It's going to be interesting to see here. Here's a replay. Okay, you can see Tomac up the inside, and I don't think Christian was uh, thinking that Eli would be there, and that is an incredible save by Eli. Look, never takes his feet, that right foot off of the foot peg to maintain his balance. Yeah, I didn't realize there was more room than I thought. Craig just moved over, and you saw Tomac shake his head. Yeah, Maybe I, Craig was taken by surprise. I don't, yeah, I, I think he was taken yeah. by surprise, Jason. I don't believe he would never do that intentionally to his teammate or anyone for that matter. The risk is just too high. And Tomac this time able to take the measure of Craig. Just so strong Tomac once he gets rolling. So now he's in the third. That was almost a disaster there. Uh, they'll discuss it back in the truck, I'm sure. And Tomac has some clear racetrack yeah. to go after Plessinger. I mean, I, I, I think it was, a, it was a simple, just a misjudgment. Like I said, Christian Craig, there's no way he would have done that uh, on purpose. No. And uh, it's just too much to risk, not only for himself, but his teammate as well. And he, he just wasn't anticipating Eli to come up so fast. Was Eli came around that outside corner and just had so much more speed, and the closing speed was fast. And you see behind Craig, Anderson putting pressure on Dungy, and they're getting away from Sexton. So Sexton's going to have to reset. So Anderson's passed him and wants more. What a line yeah. by Anderson. Anderson going everywhere, inside, outside, to try to get by Dunge. Can't quite do it. Dungy just too fast. Look at him going inside, outside. Crosses him up again. Oh, he's going to set him up right here. And Anderson no. walked the tightrope. Yeah, just too deep. Oh, oh A second. for effort, though, man. This yeah. guy's going for it. I love it. I love when Jason Anderson, watching him ride, when he's in this mode right here, can go anywhere, inside, outside, just setting the guys up, not following. It's so much fun to watch. Oh, the creativity, too, but also, man, did he eat a lot of sand in that one exchange. And he's got to reset here. Lost a little bit of ground. Well, this is going to be a good opportunity for Ryan Dungey to possibly get podium overall if he's able to reel in the gap on Christian Craig. If he's able to fend off Jason Anderson and Chase Sexton here early and not lose a lot of ground to the guys in front of him. He's going to be in a great spot. I don't think it would surprise people if Dungey gets a podium this year, if that first track where he did it was Southwick. He's had great success at this track. Three overall wins at this facility. 
So a lot to play for here because Roxy continues to lead. There he is at the top of the screen. There's Plessinger in second. He's got it to 1.8, and they still have a decent gap relatively over Tomac, although you know certainly Tomac is capable of more if he finds that next gear. But right now it's Plessinger we're watching as he tries to close on Roxon. Craig fourth, Dungey fifth. Well, Plessinger was ninth overall, ninth, eighth last week at Redbud, so certainly much better. Kenny was in fourth and a seventh, but he was sick last week. Fifth overall, much better rides for these guys early on, but still a lot of racing left. Still 22 minutes plus two laps. ETS Racing Fuels, drone cam here. Man, if Plessinger can get this done, get the lead, or even just finish the moto on the podium, what a massive shot in the arm of confidence huh. it would be for him. Yeah, could you imagine? That'd be incredible. Yeah, to go from 9-8 last weekend. He started the year at Monster Energy Supercross with a runner-up ride at round two, and has not even been close to the podium since. Endured an arm injury, lost a lot of racing time with that. And it has been okay at times here outdoors, but not even near the potential we know that he has. This is more like it for Plessinger. This is kind of Ken's MO right here. Get a good start, pull out big of a lead as possible, cruise it on into the finish line. It'd be interesting to see if he can keep this momentum up to the finish line. You just wonder what happened that first moto. It'd be great to get a sound bite from him if he makes the podium can continue on this trend. And now Tomac starting to close on Plessinger. Another battle here. Oh, they got by Dungey. Anderson did, and now you got Chase Sexton right behind. And Anderson has caught Craig. Four riders battling Craig, Anderson, Dungey, Sexton. Sexton's got to send it here, and he does. Wow, right around the outside. He's made some great passes. He passed Christian Craig in the first moto there on that outside. Now Ryan Dungey on the outside, but they're still grouped together. A lot of racing left. Anything can happen. It's going to be a good battle between those three guys. And grouped together as well now, Plessinger and Tomac. So Tomac, as he did in Moto 1, took a few laps to get going. But boy, is he ever going now. Right there in a fight for second. We'll give you the battle box brought to you by Fly Racing so we can show you everything that's happening at once. The battle with Anderson and Craig. Anderson sends it. I think he just made the move. Anderson is on the gas oh, this yeah. one. He is absolutely rolling, and that's the frustrating thing about it. You go back to last weekend at Redbud, where he had a great second moto, and that was with the crash. And then you go to the first moto where he fell down in the first corner. You just know he's better than what he's showing. And if he doesn't go down in the first corner or have an issue the first couple laps, these are the great things. These are the great rides that he can put in, Will. And Ricky, I think he's fueling him a little bit right now. I was talking to Theo Lockwood, crew chief over there at Monster Energy Kawasaki, and he said, yeah, Jason's frustrated. I just wanted to check on, see that he, if he had suffered any injuries or the bike had had any damage from that uh, tip over that you talked about there in the first turn of Moto1. They did have to change out the muffler, but Jason Anderson himself, no problems, guys. Well, that's, that's great to hear. And then I go back to right here, like you're talking about, Jason. You see how well he's riding, and you just have to assume he'd be able to do the same thing had he not went down in that first corner. So incredibly, it's frustrating for me because I want to see him up here battling as well because he brings so much to the table. Yeah, his 2022 season, you can define it by speed has not been the issue. He has been fast from day one, round one at Supercross back in January. It's just a couple incidents, some not even his fault, uh, that have cost him points. Ended up second in the Supercross rankings, and he's lost some ground in this championship as well. Next battle we're watching is the battle for second is yep. that Tomac ahead of Plessinger. Well, and Kenny's right there in front of him, so yep. they're not far off Kenny's rear tire either. This is going to be shaping up to be a nice three-way battle for the lead. Hats off to Aaron Plessinger, absolutely making it happen right here in this second moto. Track is rougher, got a great start. He is rising to the occasion with these guys. Oh, this is what Plessinger and this Red Bull KTM team have needed, trying to get him back on track. They did not hire him to be a eighth, ninth place-ish guy, but he's had that happen far too often this summer. Much more like it, right in the thick of it with Tomac and Roxon. Plessinger, one of the tallest riders in this division, trying to make that work for him out there, and now getting a few glimpses at Roxon. Send it down to Will with Plessinger's mechanic. 
That's right, Jay Dungey down here with me now. He's doing great. I saw you just write yes sir, on the pit ball. What's the big difference for this week? Uh, I kind of gave him a little tune in that last moto because I, I believe in the kid. I think he can do it. And it's just getting it out of him. And I this this moto, I think he's got, he's getting a taste of it. And he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. So he's holding on good. And uh, we've got a long moto left. So we'll hope for the best. Thanks so much, Jay. And that is Ryan Dungey's brother, actually, who's the mechanic for Plessinger. So such he gave him a little chew in there between such, motos. Yeah, such a great guy. I mean, identical to his dad. I love, I love like, see, like side oh, yeah. by side. Yeah, they're so <laughs> similar looking. It's great. But uh, he's a lot of fun. But Jay had to get serious there, light the yeah. fire under Aaron, and it has paid off. And sometimes that's all it takes, Jason, is just a little light in the fire. Especially when you know, like, he, he believes in his rider, and his rider knows that he sees and can hear that he believes in him. And, uh, man, it's great to see. Sexton not giving up on this battle with Anderson. They have cleared Craig and Dungey. And points are valuable for both of these riders. Anderson would not like to consider himself eliminated from title contention. He does not want to yield to Sexton. So they are probably going to take it to the wire. That is for fourth and fifth. We watch Tomac in the other fly racing battle box going after Plessinger. But Tomac has not blown by these no. two the way he was doing it in Moto 1. Well, and then I go back to, you know, the the, the, the rides that Tomac talks about or, or does or performs. And, He'll hang back, hang back, and then he attacks. Maybe he thinks that the pace is too fast right now, that if he attacks now, he won't have enough juice to go to the end. So we'll, we'll certainly find out. We're getting down to the wire. Methodical approach from Tomac right now, but he has inched up back to the rear wheel of Plessinger. The fans are loving this three-rider duel for the lead at Southwick. Big, long straightaway here. Tomac going to try to carry a ton of speed. Ah, a little mistake at the top of that ridge. Plessinger able to hold him off. Oh, man. It's like waiting, 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 yeah. waiting for the other shoe to drop up here. And what direction will it go? Will it be Plessinger on Roxon or Tomac on Plessinger? Or maybe Tomac all the way to the front? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's anybody's at this stage. And that's what you love to see. Either way, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love watching this. Tough to call. Because you just don't, you, you, you can't exactly call what is going to happen. Wow, Roxon's leaping out of that turn, clearing a couple of bumps. Completely yeah. different line than the rest of these riders. Yeah, good drive out of there. And then through another one of these pits. Pretty slow through here. Going to open back up in a moment. Oh, such a hard landing. Wow, yeah, one little over jump. Boom. Well, they're trying to land in a certain, I'm, I'm assuming, on the backside of one of those whoops. Yep, they're trying to land. So ap after these roller jumps, okay, with these big roller jumps, they have, like, big rollers from acceleration bumps, and these guys are trying to, like, double them, triple them, so they can land on the backside of those big rollers to keep their momentum up. All right, we're halfway through. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You could save 15% or more on your insurance by giving Geico a quick phone call. And what's going to happen in the final 15 minutes of this one? Tomac pressing Plessinger. Tomac's trying to set himself up on the inside here. Here's the big leap. They're side by side now. This could be the pass. It is. I oh, got him. Is he going to have a clear track? He does. I wasn't sure if the lapper was going to get in the way. Man, he just reels right up to the rear end of the 94. I think Ken he called Robson. it. He just waited, and all of a sudden, things have changed in a hurry. He's right there. 14 minutes and two laps, and now Tomac's in position to go for the lead. I love watching this when he gets in those modes. He's on the inside. Fans sense an opportunity. It's a really long straightaway here. Can he draw up alongside? Man. And we've seen these two battles so much through the years. We got another classic. That is a tough spot that Ken Roxon is in right now. It's like a lone <laughs> man on an island. He could probably see or hear the wrath of Eli Tomac coming. He knows he's he knows he's back there, and you're just like, oh no, pushing as hard as he can and just can't gap this guy. And Tomac tried a couple insides that didn't work. It allowed Plessinger to sneak back into this battle. So Tomac's got to be aggressive here. Remember how we talked about the first moto? I told you guys to watch Eli Tomac, how he goes lower in the corners on these big sand berms. He's kind of doing the same thing against Ken Roxon. 
See right there, now he goes a little more inside. Like I said, it's less resistance on the motorcycle. Bike rolls a little bit easier. I think he knows he has Kenny in the bag. Oh yeah, we know one of the areas he likes to make passes that back straight away. That's where he got Plessinger, where he made a bunch of moves in Moto 1. Oh, he's gonna send it around the outside here. Long way around, puts one on the inside. What a move by Tomac to grab the lead. Ah, uh, great run. I mean, just a power move by Eli Tomac. He could, Eli could probably see where Ken was laboring and slowing down. Plessinger trying to respond. He's all over Roxon now. He wants second, and I think it's bye-bye for everybody. Tomac, he just waited, and he has found another level. We follow this battle for second. Can Plessinger use the same line he wants to that Tomac used on him? He's trying to get to the left. Couldn't a, do it. This is a great battle and a spectacular ride by Aaron Plessinger. He squared it to yeah. try to get some room on in the inside, well, but Roxon had a cover. And these guys, so if you're if you're Aaron Plessinger and you can see Kenny, you know, rolling up and, and standing up, when I say standing up, like easing up in certain areas, it's you know that uh, he's in difficulty and he's not at 100%, whether it's whether he's fatigued or whatever that might be. You can sense that as a rider, so he's all over him, probably waiting to mount an attack. He knows where he could, a good passing zone to get by Kenny. And there's more on the line here for Plessinger. If he makes this pass, it would be for third overall. He would push Roxon off the podium, and he'd have his first overall podium of the year. Probably doesn't realize all that math. He just wants to position on its own. Well, there I got 11 laps plus two to go. No, pardon me, 11 minutes plus two to go. Oh, look at AP goes the inside. Oh, almost there. Keeping a wheel on him to try to get to the inside for the next corner, and it paid off. Got Plessinger him. to second. And this is where Roxon had been jumping down into that pit, but there wasn't any room that time with Plessinger right in front of him. So Plessinger is going to try to set sail. Man, well, we know. First hand here how mental this game is. I, oh, yeah. I can't imagine that that much change for Plessinger between motos. He is a totally different person. Yeah. That's crazy how guys do that. One thing didn't change, RC. No. Eli Tomac <laughs> looking for the 1 1 here at Southwick. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com, make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Got the GoPro here with Justin Barsha. So from earlier today, showing you exactly how rough this Southwick track is. Picture perfect, Cl crystal clear. And that's your GoPro course preview here from Southwick. And you would need a zoom lens if you want to see Eli Tomac in front of you because he has pulled away from this field. He's opened it up to 5.7 seconds. Geez, three laps ago, he was in third place. <laughs> He's on cruise mode at this point. Now just about maintaining that lead. And we were talking about this yesterday. Uh, He's done it so much, we take it for granted how yeah. good this guy is and how difficult it is to do what he does. This track is so rough, and, uh, you know, we kind of knew going in he'd have the edge compared to Sexton, who has not had that much time or success. But this track certainly nothing compared to Eli. But going out and executing, there are no automatics in this game. But, boy, has he put it together. And you love the strategy where he just kind of waited them out. And then when he put the hammer down, it was over. And he's putting the pressure on Chase Sexton here. And what I mean by that is he's forcing Chase Sexton into position where he's Chase is going to have to start winning. Yeah, he, he, Chase can rely on being consistent as well, but he's going to have to straight up beat Eli Tomac. Well, before this race, we had a chance to ask Tomac if he liked his position he was in in the championship. I'm in a, I'm in a good spot. I wish I had the red plate at this point, but I'm, I feel like I'm in the thick of the series where I do well. I love the tracks that we're at right now and what we have coming to us. Chase is riding really well. He's been super consistent. And for me, it's like, who's going to be the first guy to blink kind of thing. The way me and him are riding this year, 
So that's it. Thankfully, I was able to get much improved after round one. I struggled there, so that's where I gave my big points away. But now I feel like we are rolling, and it's it's just an all-out battle at this point. There you go. From the man himself, and he's exactly right. Which guy is going to blink first, or which guy's going to, you know, which guy's going to crack? Which one's going to not get good starts all the time, or lay the bike down? feel like they have to be so close to each other. But I feel like with this win here, the dynamic is going to shift. And Chase is going to, like I said, going to have to start beating Eli straight up. And you see the event points as they run. Tomac will make up 10 points in the series on Sexton if it ends like this. Sexton did get around Anderson, by the way, to move into fourth. But Tomac was only down seven coming into this race, so he should take the points lead by three if it ends this way. There's Roxon, there's Sexton. The Sexton has the opportunity to get a few more points. Wouldn't be enough to hold the points lead, but it would be enough. We're in a series where every point could count. It's enough worth fighting for. Five minutes and two laps to go, so still plenty of time for Sexton to get Roxon. Survive the battle with Anderson. And then Anstey is sixth, Dungy seventh. Roxon leaping through those bumps downhill. If Tomac wins, he's won every moto that he's led laps. It's seven for seven. He just doesn't give up leads. You know, when he gets into the lead, rarely does anybody pass him back. Oh, there's no doubt. When he gets that beast mode, we haven't seen many people able to fight back, even some of the best of the best. Roxon, Dungy, those guys even know it firsthand how tough Tomac is. Right now, Roxon's challenge is to try to hold his teammate off. This would be for third in the moto. We're looking at a Tomac Sexton, Sexton Plessinger top three overall today. Roxon has been bumped back to fourth overall. And plenty of time again for Sexton to go get this. Now Sexton admitted coming into this summer that sand really had been a weakness. He's really worked hard on it. Rides with uh, Tyler Rattray. Rattray, a two-time winner of this race in the 250 class. Guy out of South Africa who owns a track down in Florida. That's where Sexton rides. They've been putting in a lot of work on the sand tracks there to shore up his game. And he's definitely gotten better this year. There's no doubt Sexton is much improved. Oh, 100%. He's been doing a great job, especially in the outdoor series. Um, I've, been, I've been really impressed. Doesn't look like he's pushing the issue here today like sometimes he normally does. Like I go back to last weekend. Red Bud, you can really see the aggression where I'm sure he is obviously trying here, but you can't see it quite as much. To me, it's not as identi identifiable. Yeah, he said last week uh, when he got tangled up with Anderson, it actually made him mad. Then he really started to uncork it and he'd been stuck behind riders for several laps. But once he got up, he blew by all of them except Tomac to finish second. So we'll see how aggressive Sexton is here. Yeah, from a championship standpoint and points, it'd be crucial that uh, he gets by his teammate right here. Roxon really got held up by the traffic yeah, entering this section. Tomac is gone, but Sexton has at least an opening to make up or get closer in the standings if he can make this move. Well, he's made these passes along the outside right here. Jason, let's see if he's able to get out there and do it again. Yeah, he has loved this outside in. He's a little bit further back when it started this time. And there's a lap rider there. He couldn't do it. And oh. Roxon wisely goes wide. Pinches the line off for his teammate. Sexton will have to reset. That was one of his best areas on the track. Incredibly frustrating. Like, I'm putting myself in this position. I've been here several times. And you know you can get by the guy. And he just, uh, like, certain circumstances prevent that from happening. Incredibly frustrating if you're Chase Sexton. Roxon reminds me of uh, your old rival Chad Reed in his later days. He was just, it was never dirty. He just would put the bike exactly, ah, oh, not this time. Not in a long straightaway like that. Sexton gets by. But that's where Roxon's so good. He'll just end up where exactly where you wanted to go. But this yeah. time, nothing he could do about it in a big long straightaway like that. Sexton's up to third. That's by design. Kenny's an intuitive rider. Yep, yep. He can sense where the rider behind him He's possibly going to eye him up and make a pass. So he held him off for a while. Oh, and Sexton yeah, got that, off to the side, almost went down. And that's where that G out situation is like, like we were talking about in the first moto. These guys, 
your cheat out suspension is maxed out completely and you try to move and you can't because there's just so much force. Roxa trying to fight back. This is for third. And honestly, I cannot tell the difference. What is just the track being brutal and what are these guys who are just tired in some of these sections? The speeds are so much lower than they were earlier in the day. But how about that? Big error from Sexton trying to leap over some of these bumps. But every one of these guys has got to be fighting it to some degree, I would oh, think, yeah. at this point. Yeah. It's uh, tough to do. But I'm watching the timing and scoring. Sexton's got a ways to go to catch Plessinger. here. It's going to be hard. He's four seconds back, just under four seconds back. Well, how bad do you want it? We do know how bad he needs it to be able to do the 2-2 again and just keep minimizing the damage on Tomac's good days. I mean, last lap, Tomac ran a 2.18. Second best was Max Anstey as a, as a 2.20. That's unbelievable. He's over two seconds, three seconds a lap faster than the rest of the crew. Unbelievable. Wow. And he already has a 10 second lead. He doesn't even need to do that. So we will keep the watch here on Sexton. Oh, and he I is closing you. at an alarming rate. You saw it coming. Well, and this goes back, I go back to the championship situation. It adds up. You got to keep pressing on, Chase. You want to keep this thing close, keep the pressure on. Let let Eli know that you are strong. You had to come from behind. You made those late passes. It will pay dividends, I can promise you. Yeah, when Will talked to Lars Lindstrom, the team manager, earlier today in qualifying, that's what he said. We want to show Tomac that we are strong, that we're going to fight for it. And there is some definite fight in Chase Sexton right now to try to track Plessinger down. He was way back and in these final two and a half laps can he get the second oh it's going to be so close i wonder if um, ap is going to make a last lap last couple lap surge here to keep himself in podium position yeah it doesn't affect the overall i don't think even if uh, plessinger gets passed but i don't know if he knows that so he's going to have to go all out you would think to have an insurance policy won't want to roll over uh, the best the best moto that Aaron Plessinger has had in his 450 career would be last year. The first round at Paula, he got second, so he would tie his best moto finish. If he gets Plessinger, it will re-vault Sexton back into the points lead. He'd be down one right now. So he already got two back getting Roxon. Could get two more if he gets AP. And he'll hold on to the red plate as we go to Millville, Minnesota next Saturday. How will this turn out? Both riders digging so deep. That section is so rough. Man, these guys going for it. Sexton cleaning his goggles off. He has just been getting covered all moto long. Okay, this is the section. Remember, he's made several passes around the outside here. This time, fading to the left. Yeah. No, there it is. He's Here's the run. For it. The bomb run down the hill. Can he beat him back to the inside? Sexton is done, and he's up to second. Oh, he's oh. Been, I thought he was going to overshoot the entry of the corner. He's been picking him off there all day long. Who came in hot, just got the Honda stopped. What an effort. Yeah, big pass, not only to keep the red plate. Uh, he's got two more laps to bring it on to the finish. If he can make it through this next lap, not let Aaron Plessinger make up any time on him and get on that rear wheel, I think he'll have it locked in. So impressive. Way back and forth. Gets Roxon, gets Plessinger. Now a lap and a half to go to bring it home. And it's enough, if it stays this way, to maintain the points lead by one point. They have a one point gap yeah. in the standings at the halfway mark. Well, these guys, these two guys have certainly. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was a close one. <laughs> Leaned into it and saved it, but certainly these two guys, Chase Sexton and Eli Tomac, have established themselves as they are the front runners for this championship. You can bet it. Uh, any unforeseen incidents, they are. it's going to go down between these two guys. The other riders just can't quite seem to get there. Whatever the circumstances may be, whether it's bad luck, not feeling comfortable on their motorcycles. But uh, at the end of the day, Sexton and Tomac have been the most consistent 
and somehow, some way, find themselves on the podium and up front, all Man. two motos every time. Unbelievable the way the airs these jumps out. Yeah, and these are blind jumps, yeah. so they're going all on timing and feel <laughs> and sound of, of, of the RPMs. Yeah, he lands one direction or the other, long or short, and hits one of those holes yeah, it's in not, a different way. It's not pleasant. <laughs> no. Uh, and plus, again, these guys are going to be at their most fatigued. The track so rough. Those rollers that he just went through there, uh, John Dowd, one of the legends at this track, multi-time winner, he built those with his dozer yesterday. Said, I'm pre-building in some bumps for these guys. I love it. Oh, they, the rougher they, the better. I they love, laugh. I love, being, I love seeing these athletes be put <laughs> to the test. And if they hear any complaints, they're just going to go out there and make it even worse. Yeah. Don't tempt these guys. These are some of the Iron Men of motocross who helped build this facility that they grew up racing on. John Dowd, uh, Keith Johnson, and his family who operate the facility. Looks like Marshall Welton about to go a lap down as Sexton gets him. Also, shout out to Doug Henry, another local legend who does the skid steer work. And Mike Treadwell, a local pro here as well. Did well as a uh, rider in this national. Oh, yeah. He's part of the crew. We go back to Eli Tomac with a lap to go. Picture perfect from that second moto at Mount Morris. Really? Yeah. All last weekend, the Red Bud, now this weekend, and he's passing everybody. He's passing the best guys, so you can't question, not that anyone would. So as a, as a, as a rider, if you're Eli Tomac, there's no better way to win, especially when you come up through the pack and pass, uh, pass all the fast guys. It's like, it's great for you mentally, and uh, really just puts a stamp on it. Yeah, there's no doubt he came in with a lot of people expecting it to go this way at Southwick, but you got to actually make it happen. And when he was eighth early in the first motor, I thought, man, maybe, maybe we've got to throw the script away. He waited, and then once he got rolling, he went right to the front, and then you had a feeling in Moto2 he would do the same. You kind of called it about a lap before the charge happened. 14 minutes to go. He put the hammer down. And this is where Tomac excels. Pretty amazing, the versatility. This guy is so good in Monster Energy Supercross. But you get him on a rough, gnarly outdoor track, and he is just a beast. So he can do the full gamut. And about to bring it home here. What a season he has had so far. And the last time a rider won the Supercross and Motocross titles in the same year was Ryan Dungey way back in 2015. And Tomac making a bid for that in 2022. He will not take the points lead. He's going to miss it by one point as we are six races down with six to go in this series. But boy, does he ever have the momentum on his side, aiming for five straight Moto wins. The man who is third all time in overall wins in this class behind you and Ryan Dungey just keeps adding to his total. Three straight overall wins, five motos in a row in route for the Monster Energy. Yamaha star racing man. And he's embraced by the fans as Eli Tomac goes 1-1 at Southwick. And in what could be his final visit to this track, he leaves on top. Waiting for the other riders to come across here is Plessinger. Sexton is across the line. Aaron Plessinger is going to get a moto podium and an overall podium. That's going to feel like a win for him. Oh, yeah. Great job by Aaron Plessinger. That'll give him so I assume that would give him some confidence mentally to know that if he gets a good start, keeps it upright those first few laps, makes some good passes, gets up front, he can contend for podium. And long coming back from a pretty bad arm injury and finally gets it to click. As for Tomac, well, it clicked a couple of races ago. Remember, we thought he was en route to the overall win in Colorado until Sexton tipped over in the last lap, and that changed the math. Could have been four straight overalls. Everything going Tomac's way right now. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. 
Welcome back, everybody, to Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. We're here in Southwick, Massachusetts, 450 Moto2 just done. And wow, a dominating performance from you, Eli. That is now five Moto wins in a row. We're at the official halfway point of this season here now. Do you feel in control of this championship yet? Well, we're just doing what we can. You know, this is a gnarly, gnarly points race. Uh, obviously, neither of us has uh, really made a mistake yet or blinked, and uh, we're both pushing each other. And um, that time I got a better start. Um, AP was right and awesome. So was Kenny. I had to work really hard to get to the front of that one. This place is a lot of fun, but at the same time, it brings a lot of pain. I mean, the end of that moto, your legs are done. So uh, enjoy it. Love the sand. And uh, thank you to all the fans. Thank you, Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, Alpine Star Oakley Bell Helmets, BPG, and uh, another great weekend for us. Thanks so much, Eli. Congratulations. You are now only one point off the points lead. And that's what we were saying. No matter how fit you are, his legs are done. We'll give you the Lucas Oil race recap real quick, show you how this turned out. Tomac gets rolling, gets around Plessinger, and then closes in on Roxon for the lead. And this outside turns to an inside. Power move for the lead for ET3. Got away from there. Here's Plessinger getting around Roxon. Yeah, he was sitting there lurking, lurking. Finally got deep into this race. He was able to get by Kenny. Just a fantastic ride by Aaron Plessinger. And Sexton salvaging it late. He was mired back there, but then he gets Roxon, and then here goes around the outside. He loved this line all afternoon and uses that to get around Sexton to at least get second place points, which is the best he could do on a day where Tomac was unbeatable. And there's the win, and you hear the crowd response as well. Sexton, a hard-earned 2-2. And Plessinger is going to be on the podium in the moto and overall. Let's send it back to the podium. Thank you, Jason. Hard earned is exactly the right way to put that. Chase, congratulations there. I don't know how you had that left in you to do that, to fight that hard towards the end of the moto there, and you've kept a hold of this red plate. Man, that was a tough race. I uh, definitely didn't get a good start, and uh, those guys were gone, and I just, I put my head down. This place has never been my favorite, and today I actually had fun, so I'm just happy to get out of here still with the red plate, and uh, the rest of these tracks I really like, and uh, I'm looking forward to battle with Eli. He's been uh, on a roll lately, which I got to stop. But uh, man, it's just been—it's uh, been fun. That was, a, that was a tough moto. Probably one of my best motos all year, just coming from the back and uh, just stoked with the team. My bikes are handling great, and uh, man, I just want to keep this thing going. Hang on to that red play. We got to keep—we got to start winning motos, win races. But uh, just having a blast. And these fans are awesome, and they kept me going out there. Impressive ride. Congratulations, Chase. Two weekends in a row of two twos for Sexton. And that has led to this. Tomac has taken the points all the way down to one at the halfway mark. Look at that. It is tight. I like what Chase Sexton says. He says he's glad to get out of here at the points lead, and he likes the tracks coming up. OK, yes. it's game on. Sexton has not won an overall since the opening round of the series, but he has sure done a good job maintaining that lead through consistency. Here's your standings. Uh, Roxon Anderson, Dungey, Craig, top six. Rough one to go of it for Barsha today with a couple crashes. Uh, and uh, Plessinger moving up. He's eighth in points. That's going to do it for our 450 Moto2 coverage. We're in a rush to get our 250 final Moto of the day going. Uh, so congrats out to these guys. They put on a heck of a show. And it turns out to be the Eli Tomac story as expected going in. But he had to work for it against this 450 field. And we'll resume this battle next Saturday from Millville, Minnesota. For now, signing off for Ricky Carmichael and Will Kristen. I'm Jason Wagen. Stay with us for 250 Moto 2.